Okay. Something like that. Wouldn't that be cute? Hey. Oh, wait. <laughs> All right. Do I have... Can I... How do I shut this off? All right. Good stop. Okay. Now let's, uh... Let's talk about... Uh, we're talking about this thing. This is the Harley Benton T E. No, yeah, it's a T. No, there's an S T. An S T. Um, this is an S T twenty. Yeah, this is an S T twenty. So basically, it's the most standard of like lines, really, like basic line. If I'm not mistaken, this is the, like their basic st uh, ST style, the one of the lowest. It's not. I don't think it's the lowest, lowest uh, end line, but um, I, but I think it's close to there. But so, uh, so what do you get? Well, uh, I, you know what? I, I I have a feeling I have the, the notes to this here. So let's let's see if I have. <laughs> you know, you would think I come prepared for these things, but it, no, no, this is. Um, First of all, it takes a lot of guts just for me to do this. Oh, that's that's where it, that's where it went. Okay, um, it's not this one. Not the one. I guess I have a few of these guitars. Oh, okay. So this is the one. <laughs> no, no. I mean, I mean, I only have one of this. This one here. And this one is the Harley Benton ST20 H H for the humbucker SS. For two single coils, and it comes in uh, uh, satin black, as you can see. And this is the standard series. So with this, you get the standard neck. And what's that standard neck? Well, well, all right. Let's let's go through the whole uh, the list of details that um, this is giving us. So we have a, po a poplar body. We have a maple neck. That's obviously bolted on. And the fretboard is Roseacre. I believe that's another word for saying a, a more toasted version of maple or something, or wood. I don't know. Um, so, and that's on the, that's on the fretboard. So there's a, uh, the neck is maple and the fretboard is Roseacre. All right, so, and the... We have a modern C. Does that really feel like a modern C? Yeah, all right, whatever that... Is this modern times? So anyways, a modern C, that's what they're calling it. A fretboard radius of 305 millimeters. Uh, that's 12-inch radius, right? Okay, so scale length is uh, 648, so I'm going to guess this is the, the, the standard 25 and a half inch, right? Uh, yeah. So, um... 22 frets, double action truss rod, and a five-way pickup sw switch, uh, synchronized tremolo, black hardware, as you can see. And the strings that come along with the, this guitar would be zero, uh, nine to 42, and the color is black matte. Okay. This guitar came out in 2019. So, and um, this is basically a, um, you could say an entry level guitar. But uh, uh, entry level is what, you know? <laughs> I guess you can play like an entry person, uh, a beginner. Or just play the freaking thing. You know, so this is uh, uh, this is not the S, uh, Harley Benton's ST62, which I actually am a big fan of, if you haven't figured that out. But this is not the ST62. This is the ST20. Um, and it, it uh, uh, although I really like what Harley Benton does with their maple necks, it's kind of hard to tell when you have this painted neck that's not, though it's very comfortable to play and it's satin, it's basically very soft, you don't stick to it. Um, <clears throat> it's still one of those things that I sometimes feel detached from the guitar when certain barriers or certain layers are put on. I'm getting that kind of feeling with that, but with this. Um, and I'm not particularly fond of uh, 
Although I like the look of it, uh, is the satin feel on uh, on a finish. Overly satin. Like I'll, I'll explain later. I think I did it on one of my on my on my ST's sixty two um, sunburst. <clears throat> Uh, I, I did sand down the finish, uh, but with, you know, uh, really nicely. I didn't, like, make any scratches, but I just took the, the, the heavy ur uh, polyurethane finish, and I brought it down a little bit, a lot. So, But then I polished it right back up again. It, it seems really beautiful, but that's not what this is. So um, <clears throat> it's very smooth. Like, uh, you can probably run a pair of nylons on here, butt naked, and never get a scratch. And obviously you shouldn't. But, and all the hardware seems nice. Uh, nothing really poking out. No real sharp bits. I don't like sharp bits sticking out, especially in the, in the saddle areas where, you know, if all these set screws are sticking out. On some types of guitars that include these type of bridges, you'll get that kind of shenanigans. I'm not getting that kind of experience from this. <clears throat> so that passes. These are, these uh, weren't considered or marked, uh, marked as made by Roswell, so I'm assuming they're not. So this is the standard series that doesn't have any indication that it says Roswell. There's no Roswell pickups in here. So whatever Harley Benton was using previously for these uh, types, that's what the, this is the sound. Which, to tell you the truth, is not a bad sound. I mean, considering how far we've come in the last few decades, folks. So just to, just because you don't know what the, the big brand name is, if there is a big brand name that makes this, which probably there isn't, um, they could be generically produced out in China. But maybe they had a decent plan that they're working off. So you'll wind up with uh, not a bad sound. <laughs> Okay, I have my I have my um, my big muff on, so I'm sorry, but that's that was that's it clean. That's clean. Look at that on the humbucker right there. So let's go to the pickups right while we're at it. Okay, so I'm gonna put it all up so you can hear. So we're now we're at that phase between the two, between these two. Here's the humbucker pickup. Do we run out of okay? We ran out of contacts. Okay, so so there you go. So this is sounding. It has a very warm body, but there's not enough, you know, that stratty sound. So, but it is kind of warm and roundish, plucky round, not like like soft round. All right, we're finally going a little out, are we? Uh, not enough to disturb me. <laughs> okay, so that's what we got here. Um, let me see how this middle pickup sounds like. get to this this humbucker so it's like we have a complete filter change you hear that tone change between and then we get to now I like it how it sounds up here but by the time I get here up here I feel nasally as opposed to uh, the, this, the neck pickup over here in this position is not sounding nasally. Let's see what the middle pickup sounds like. No nasally here. By the time we get here, 
It's kind of oddly scooped, the tonal characteristic. And I don't have a, a, a tube overdrive on there. So there, there's no, you know, tube screamer or anything. I don't even have the, not even a booster on. So this is it. It could be that this is yearning to be pushed a little bit. So I'm just going to put a boost on it. Now let's compare that to the neck. And this is with the boost. Okay, so let's go to the middle pickup. Actually, that middle pickup sounds sweet, doesn't it? Okay, so let's go to the uh, humbucker. It's sounding more humbuckerish, and it should because it's a humbucker. Um, and it does break up sooner. It's, it is already, you can hear it's breaking up a little bit. But uh, it's still a little bit breaking up towards nasally for some reason. Um, anyway, it, it's, it, uh, you know, there's a lot of things you can fix in the mix or with pedals and EQs and whatever like that. And, uh, and then sometimes it is what it is and you wind up liking what you like or how it is, whatever you got. So here, so here again, this is what it sounds like with no effects. I'm gonna put an ultra metal Behringer pedal on it. to take that off and just put on just a, the Duke of Tone, which is a little, I, I like this, uh, you know, slight overdrive. to the two, uh, two screamer. <laughs> it's funny because it's already kind of like nasally. It really points out more nasally when you go to a tube screamer because tube screamers are very uh, pa parametric in my way, in my thinking. Like they're very... Um, Unique in that little tonal disturbance that makes it sound like that tube screamer. Yeah, yeah that's what that does. But I, I'm really, since uh, I got the, the MXR Duke of Tone, I love it. Okay. That still sounds good on the, on the neck pickup. Let me say that middle pickup again. Between the two. It does it does kind of break up nice in a warm way with the Duke tone. So there you go. So it's not a it's not a bad guitar. It's actually a good guitar. It's 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 it's, it's worth the money. Uh, it may not be one that you're gonna take up on stage with you. I'll be honest with you. There's something here that's lacking for me. Um, I did put in, I, I did take out the, the string trees and I put in these little rollers um, to help with the whammy. <laughs>
I recommend this? Well, first of all, if you're an ST type player, a Strat player, and you're looking for something that looks like very metal-esque, well, it, this does. It, it looks like that. Um, I'll tell you right now, though, if you're looking for to do like, you know, the heavy progressive stuff with lots of heavy whammy bar work, if you can tame it, God bless you. But I wouldn't put too much um, dependency on how much this could produce. Uh, I'm saying some good words about it as I'm playing it, sure, because I'm sitting down with it. Um, but I think... Uh, to be honest, I think if you move up, if off the 20s, this is this this is the ST20, which is obviously the Strat version, well, ST style, and then they have a TE version, which is the Tele version, and I I have I have an up and coming presentation of that too. I have some words about that. So my words about this. So obviously, I usually take out the back plate and just to see what the hell is going on back there, and it looks pretty. This actually looks very clean in here, as you can see. And I don't not sh I'm not really sure if this is just black paint in here or if did they put any conductive paint. Um, we can actually see what what kind of noise factor we're gonna. I'm gonna actually make a try to. I got the. I'm not really getting much noise, am I? Um, I'm gonna put the fuzz box on. Well, okay, I, I do have a good fuzz box. <laughs> I have the JHS Muffaletta, um, and that gives me like six different, oh, six different types of fuzz box sounds, all based on um, the Big Muff. Which uh, years ago I you know I did have one of those old big muff boxes, um, so back in the day. <laughs> and but now they have the the Buffaletta by GHS has several versions. It gives, it gives you like the history of of the, all the the versions that came out um, of um, the big muff. And uh, and I'm using not that version. <laughs> I'm using the. I'm using because uh, uh, JHS supplies gives you five. Uh, JHS gives you with the muffaletta five different types of uh, big muffs that were manufactured those tonalities, and then they give you one more. That's their JHS one, and I just so happen that I do like that one more. It could be that of 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 the other ones, the other five, like the the JHS one, just happens to be maybe two like. Configure a little louder, just a little bit. So as soon as you turn, it, you you switch to that. It goes, hey, it sounds better because it's louder. Cheater. <laughs> but nevertheless, I really, I do like the tone. I really dig it. So anyway, so uh, that's the only thing I was playing around today with. Well, so and uh, the Behringer Ultra Metal. But uh, so the the clean version. This is actually a decent clean guitar, but. There's, there's a saying that, you know, we have, and I'm not sure if it's a saying, but <clears throat> some guitars are easy to play. Some, like, some literally almost play themselves. They're so easy to play. You breathe on it, they, and they, they some, some guitars are like that. Very few, actually. But when you get one, you, people know. But most, most of the time, you, you get a decent guitar, and those are the guitars that um, you, you gravitate to, and then that becomes what a guitar should sound like, feel like, play like. And then every once in a while, as you get older, and more experienced, you start discovering, well, I remember those types of guitars that were a little extra hard to play. And what do I mean by hard to play? Well, some, well obviously, uh, you could go to the, to the extreme with, oh, I don't like playing that because of a high action. Okay. Or oh, I don't like playing that because it's a 24. It's a 25 and a half inch scale and sort of a 24 and three quarter. Or, or I don't like C shaped necks. I like D necks or V shaped necks or compound necks. Or I don't like this, the, these shapes, you know. It, or I don't like it. It's not a guitar unless it's slightly arched like a Les Paul. Or if it just only has one cutaway like a Les Paul. Or it should, or it should weigh a ton like a Les Paul. Or. 
or it's a neck diver like an SG, you know? So what is it that makes a guitar? Well, the guitar is just basically a piece of wood and then some steel and a magnet and probably some bone, and if not, then it's plastic. But they all have personalities, and with that personality inherent in each individual guitar, not just the style, or the model, or the manufacturer, or, the, or who makes it. It's every, every one of these things have a, a life of their own, and how it affects the handler is completely different from one handler to the other. All right, so how do I feel about this? It's a guitar. It actually sounds decent. It, I don't know. I, I, this is, feels like it's in the, lights, in the light area. It's probably like around 7 I would say like seven, four, seven, maybe seven and a half pounds. I, I should have my scale. I'll, maybe I'll maybe I'll do that <laughs> if I can get back to it. Get back to you in time. Oh, let's let me let me let, let, let's skip that. Let's, let's go back to this. So, uh, so what do I think? I, I well, I do like <laughs> I do like the uh, the idea of a black guitar with a tortoise shell pick. I just not crazy about the <clears throat> the satin black, but I got it. Because at the price that I, I was getting this, it was being offered, I should say, from Toman uh, in Germany, no less. And then to be shipped here, it was just kind of ridiculous to pass up. So I took the plunge. I got this one, and did I get one? Well, I, I might have gotten my, the TE20 uh, SBK um, HH, <laughs> which is two humbuckers. Went out to telly. And it's the same makeup like that. Same, you know, it looks black. Um, I think it, yeah, that also has a tortoise shell pick art. I'll show you that. And uh, I'm sure you'll find that video somewhere in my collection of videos being displayed. And uh, hey, I, if I haven't told you, man, it would be, it would do me a real big favor if you could just you know, hit that subscribe or like or follow button or the notifications. That would really be cool. <laughs> and if by chance you see a link that, uh, if you like this guitar, and it ins and if I'm inspiring you to buy it or check it out, then once you hit that link, it doesn't cost you anything. Um, uh, and uh, yeah, you know. <laughs> My affiliate link, is there an affiliate link? There's gotta be one down here. <laughs> okay, uh, if not then, Hit one of those subscribe, follow. Okay, I said that already. So, final thoughts. The guitar works. And I'm not going to be a snob and say uh, these shouldn't even be considered because it's bogus. The whole idea is freaking bogus. And it doesn't matter if it came from China or not. What the, what the important thing is is that Harley Benton is, is, is kicking ass. Now, this is not the type of ass they're using, and this is not the type of vehicle I should say they're using to kick ass with. From my understanding, they're kicking ass with their Fusion line and their Fusion 3 line, um, those kind, those, and, and their, um, and, now, uh, and uh, now they have the, um, the 25th anniversary, um, what else? They also have, man, they have uh, their, their Les Paul, I believe their 550, 552s, it's the second versions, but I, I heard they're really good. In fact, I'm probably going to plan to get one soon. So, um, but again, it's not going to, it's not uh, to tell you that um, I'm a Gibson or a Fender hater because no, I, that's not the way I roll because it's very hard to get rid of something like this, you know? And have this be its substitute because, first of all, <laughs> they're two different girls, aren't they? Yeah, they, they, they might both have six strings, but <clears throat> they're two different animals. Now, I've always been, as far as I could remember, <laughs> I've been a pretty much a devoted Gibson person. Uh, I really do like Gibsons, uh, and I like Fenders too. I like good. I like good guitars. Um, you know, when it comes to 
my um, my my favorite guitar. Well, that's right there. That's my Guild, my Guild Jumbo F50. Yeah, so I like good guitars, and I like guitars that are, are affordable, and it makes it more inspiring for the the young people out there to get inspired by without the limitations now okay my last last and final thought <clears throat> on this guitar uh so at the, nowadays it's 2023 you might be able to find these guitars still on um, Tolman if they're still making them and the honest truth is they're still worth the money um but uh, uh, the way things are trending and, and the price point at which they're selling and manufacturing these things, it's, it might be to your benefit to just add another 20 or $30 or more to get, say, an, uh, an, a, a Harley Benton ST62 version. Although none of the 62 versions, if I'm not mistaken, come with any... Uh, humbuckers. the The closest one would be there uh, the Harley Benton ST sixty two Hot Rod, which which comes with a um, a, a twin blade hum, mini humbucker style in, a sh in the space of a sh single coil. I got that coming up too, <laughs> so stick around for that. And sooner or later, I'll probably do a shootout between them all. And, uh, but in the meantime, this is not bad. Not bad at all, Harley Benton. Um, and uh, would I recommend this to a student? Sure. In fact, um, maybe give me some suggestions about how I can uh, maybe, I don't know, give this away. What do you think? Should I give it away? Maybe I should, I should do something like some sort of contest. <laughs> It'll probably cost me an arm and a leg just to pack it for you. <laughs> well, I still have the box and everything. But still, I don't know. I kind of feel bad about shipping things because, and then I feel responsible if, if it breaks. <laughs> even if I even, even if I wind up giving, to, giving it to someone for free. Anyway, so anyway, so this is what it is. Harley Benton, good job. Very good job. Um... So, hey, don't be afraid to, to buy something affordable. You know, you'd be surprised. Um, this thing works. Okay, so would I, uh, did I say would I show up on set with this? I, I mean, yeah, I, I probably would out of just for balls and spite. But something in the back of my head says, you know, I, I'm dealing with a little less um, guarantee in my mind or in my hands. Sound-wise, it seems pretty good, but everything everything has to make sense in, in the mind of a guitar player who's playing. You know, it, it's more than the look. It's more than the feel, remember. It's even more than the sound. There's a lot of things that, are, that are, have to be weighed in. Um, on the other hand, not every guitar, not all guitarists are built the same. Just like guitars, they're not built the same. Every Fender, every Gibson is different. Who the hell is that? Okay, it's time for me to go. That's what it is. Thanks, folks. For, thanks uh, for sticking around. Thanks, folks, for sticking around. It's been a pleasure entertaining you. And I do hope you get to see me again on the next venture I show to you about where I'm going to go, where I'm going to land with what instrument is going to be my new joy. Oh, I do like looking for joy. Have you found joy? Okay. There is somebody I have a crush on. And her name is Joy. <laughs> all right. So, folks, thank you very much. See you all in the next one. Peace. And be kind to one another.
Be kind to the other guitars. <laughs> Bye.